Montana Talks here. here, live and local. This is Montana Talks with Aaron Flint. Broadcasting live across the great state of Montana, powered by the Montana Electric Cooperative Association. Your Montana Electric Cooperative, they do much more than keep the lights on for you. This is Montana Talks with Aaron Flint. Well, it's a beautiful morning here in the Gallatin Valley. And first off, congratulations to all the graduates out there. Uh, Not only are we broadcasting live from the Hilton Garden Inn in Bozeman, Montana this morning, but I know there's a lot of family members and friends that are in Bozeman today for the Montana State University graduation. So it's been fun seeing kind of all the families, uh, you know, coming and going from the hotel yesterday and in today. So congratulations to all the graduates out there. Uh, We are broadcasting live from the Hilton Garden Inn. So if you're in the Bozeman area, come down and see us. We've got the microphones open for you. Uh, and then, uh, or you can message us on our Montana Talks app if you got something you want to talk about. That's how you can jump in on the conversation for today. Uh, I'm actually in town because uh, I have I was asked to speak at the luncheon here today, uh, hosted by the Gallatin County uh, Republican Women. They've actually got four speakers that are going to be speaking here today, and uh, uh, I won't try to talk too long because people get to hear me enough uh, and. They're going to have much more fun hearing what my wife Jessica has to say because my wife Jessica is one of the speakers that will be here at the luncheon later today. Uh, and then one of the other speakers, great guy, got a chance to catch up with him over coffee earlier this morning. Charles Garner lives in the Flathead Valley, lives in the Kalispell area. He authored a book, A Canary in a Coal Mine, Hope for a Culture in Free Fall. I stress that word hope for a culture in a free fall it's just getting so crazy out there it is. isn't it across the board uh, we had a number of readers across the united states uh who read the book and um gave good praise but came down to this idea of hope and some of them came back to us and said i'm not sure we're as hopeful as you guys are uh so but i think as long as um uh, america uh has the potential of turning back to god i think there's hope uh, and I speak as somebody that I mean, that's my that's my line of country right there. Uh, I've been working in churches and with churches for over 50 years, and uh, and I cannot um, say there uh, that we can abandon hope because with God, uh, all things are possible. Uh, Jonah, we discussed this earlier. Jonah and the uh, Assyrians, the Ninevites, they turned back, and he came there to pronounce their benediction i mean he was saying y'all are over okay uh but uh, they they repented and turned back to god and hope sprang uh their empire lasted longer than they thought so you've you've seen and heard the pushback uh, because i know one of the points that you make in this book and in general is that just a sliver there is a sliver of the american christian community that could save this country that yes, could get this country so. turned around, that could save our kids, save our kids' That's futures, fine. but they're sidelining themselves. And they're saying, oh, you know what? I'm just going to focus on church. I'm just going to focus on, on on this. I don't, not only do I not need to get involved in in political and civil discourse, but, uh, but uh, you know, uh, but they feel like they shouldn't get they involved. Should. Taking your calls live, 406-294-0970. Montana Talks with Aaron Flint. All right, we're here with Charles Garner, the author of A Canary in a Coal Mine, Hope for a Culture in Free Fall. He lives in the Flathead Valley, but he's speaking, uh, one of the speakers uh, this afternoon at the Gallatin County uh, Republican Women's Luncheon. Uh, Charles, yeah, some of the... You, You've made the argument that just a sliver of the evangelical Christian community could save this country, could have already saved this country, yes. could get this country headed back in the right direction. Uh, but yet not only do they not want to get involved, not only are they on the sidelines, but they almost feel like it's a moral superiority by staying on the sidelines from civic and political discourse. Right. Uh, but 
we need to recognize that we have a dual citizenship. Uh, the, uh, the kingdom of God, we're citizens of that. Uh, Paul says that we have been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. So we have a, the Christians have a heavenly citizenship, the kingdom of God, which is the rule and reign of God within the heart and life of an individual. But at the same time, the, the New Testament stresses that we are to be uh, engaged in the temporal kingdoms and subject to those temporal kingdoms. Uh, Paul and Peter both said to sub almost identical phrases to submit yourself to the authorities. Well, the, the, the authority they were riding under, the authority they were living under was the Roman Empire. Uh, it was a tyranny. It was a monarchy. Thumbs up, you lived. Thumbs down, you died. And both of those men submitted themselves all the way to death. Uh, Peter died crucified upside down in 64 A.D. Uh, Paul was beheaded as a Roman citizen, uh, not crucified. He was beheaded in um, 67. Uh, when our founders established this form of government that we live under, uh, it was established as a constitutional republic. I think Lincoln probably best described that uh, in the Gettysburg Address. Uh, the last phrase of that, the last sentence of it, it says that this government of, by, and for the people. So in the constitutional republic, our representatives are representing the people, and the people are the government. We are the authority. I, I know we get this thing flipped. They flip the script. It, it's it's uh, the people in Helena, they are the ones who are in authority. Or the people in Washington, they are the ones in authority. And they look at us as subjects. But that's not the way... It is established in America. And for the Christian, we must participate. Yeah, and we are, you know, they, they, I think you even have the quote here. Uh, I saw there was an Andrew Breitbart quote in here. And I got a chance to, I got a chance to see Andrew Breitbart because I would go to these, these, I would be on Radio Row right. at some of these right online conventions. Exactly. Right back. And actually when, when Andrew Breitbart passed away, it was crazy. I was on a run. I was on uh Camp Lemonier, Djibouti, Africa. <laughs> and I think I had my rucksack, my Mystery Ranch rucksack on. I went for a ruck run around the base perimeter. I get back and the people that were in the, you know, in, in the, uh, the, in the, uh, the headquarters buildings with all the TVs, they're like, we just saw you on Fox News. What are you doing on Fox? I was like, well, why was I on Fox? Well, Andrew Breitbart had, pa had passed away. And the B-roll footage that Fox was using, I'm standing in the background as Breitbart is, yeah, you know, having this debate with this Trustafarian kind of leftist guy, I think at Minneapolis, it was just kind of crazy. But but he had the quote where, you know, politics is downstream of culture, but but also cult, uh, po but but also politics is trying to drive the culture as well, and yes. which is why people need to get civically engaged. That's right. Uh, uh, John Fuller, uh, state senator here in Montana, great guy, a yep. great guy. Uh, historian. Uh, John uh, wrote the forward to the book, and he used the Breitbart quote that uh, politics is downstream uh, from culture. What John asked the question was, what's upstream from culture? Uh, and it's the family, it's the church, it's our schools. Those are the things that he said are shaping our culture. And so if politics is downstream, we have to have those, those three things engaged. It has to be family, it has to be church, it has to be school. If those are engaged, then it shapes the politics because that comes later in the discussion. It comes later downstream. And so I think John's right. Uh, it's, it's the, those are the things that are foundational to any culture, any society. Uh, the family unit. First thing that ever was established was the family unit. Uh, the biblical story, Adam, Eve their children I, I forget what triggered this a week or two ago but you know i i went on in one of my rants is you get a lot of people that say okay well if the government tells you to do something you just got to do it you just got to roll over set up and wear your mask shut down your church uh, men and girls locker rooms uh it's like and i said wait a minute okay uh, and they'll throw out well render under caesar that which is caesar well this is not rome our constitution is is caesar uh, but to, to go off of what you said is that we the render under we the people right. that which is we the people well, that, really is that, is that very quote that you picked up render yeah. to Caesar the things that are Caesar's the money thing not that's a, the temporal kingdom they were under that temporal kingdom okay and to God the things that are God's that's that dual citizenship right there it's highlighted in the teaching of Jesus he said you have a responsibility to do this 
but it matters on the form of government. That was a tyranny. It was an empire. Uh, it was uh, a monarchy. Uh, we do not have that. The Constitution of the Republic. Have you seen New York lately? Have you seen California lately? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but that's the thing. This has to return to its roots. We have to return to who we are. And we're letting that slip away. We're letting that change. By a sliver in some places. Oh, By yes. a simple sliver. I mean, you do, as we were talking earlier this morning over coffee, you talked about how there is a sea of red of normal, everyday working folks, oh, yes. farmers, ranchers. If you go county by county, folks, it's a red country. Country. But we are being dictated to by these islands of blue, and, and and we see our country is on the brink right now. And that's why a lot of people think your book talks about the rise and fall of empires. And that's why a lot of people think that that we are on the edge of a fall. We are already seeing a, a forced, a deliberate decline in America. More with Charles Garner right after this. Open microphones at the Hilton Garden Inn, Bozeman. Talking about the issues that matter to Montana statewide, this is Montana Talks with Aaron Flint. Hey, look at that, Charles Garner. You're, you're, we got a man from Prey. You were talking about faith and 2024, and a man from Prey, Montana just walked in. There you go. There you go. All right, Charles Garner, hold that thought because, uh, yeah, we got a couple of other uh, great folks here at the microphones. I want to go uh, to Suzanne Nordwick. Uh, out of the Butte area. She's been just such a, uh, a freedom fighter in the Butte, Montana area for so many years. And it's been very interesting to watch the political dynamics and the shifts in the Anaconda area in particular, but in Butte, especially with the younger people. Uh, but Su Suzanne, I wanted to get your take. Uh, and of course, if you got something else you want to mention, feel free. But I want to get your take. Big news came out yesterday. Uh, uh, John Tester, Democrat Senator John Tester, he voted against the Lake and Riley Act uh, like three weeks ago or something, got hammered for it. Now, most in the Montana media ignored this story, but, uh, but Tester gets hammered for voting against the Lake and Riley Act. He gets hammered for voting in support of men and girls locker rooms. He got hammered for voting in support of the secret flights for illegal aliens being transported all over America. And now he pretends to be concerned about the illegals that just showed up on the Flathead County Sheriff's doorstep. But just yesterday, flip flop, flat top. He flip flopped on the Lake and Riley Act. Now he says he's going to support the Lake and Riley Act. It, it, is it an election year? What's going on? I don't know. He yep, it's an election year in Montana, and I think uh, Tester was going to try to get by not having to flip-flop this time because he was just going off the California donations on the woke agenda, but uh, I guess that's not going to work for him, and he decided he's going to have to return to his Montana roots for another year <laughs> if he wants to try to get reelected. Yeah, it's, uh, you, you say the Montana roots, it's, it's, I, I kind of think like, you know, like, He's he's trying to dye his hair, but yet, but you know, the real colors started to kind of show. You know, it's like, hey, I think you need to go back and see your hairdresser there. Yeah, go he back had, to, had to see if he'd get that old Chevy truck to, <laughs> to to turn over again. My goodness, yeah, you know, it that shows me he must be just really desperate right now because they were spending a million dollars a week bashing Navy SEAL veteran Tim Sheehy. And that didn't work. If anything, it only helped Tim Sheehy even further. And then, and then now he's flip flopping on the Lake and Riley. I, he he must be seeing something in his polling that that got them this desperate. They're freaking out. Yeah, I don't think it's looking good for John Tester. A, a lot of Montanans are are waking up that we need to have a conservative in our in our second Senate seat. It's just a doesn't fit Montana that we have such so somebody so progressive and uh, that only you know I we. He's just not. He's just not. Uh, time to retire him. It's just been too long, and yeah. Uh, yeah, he's embraced that full woke agenda too. Suzanne Nordwick, by the way, a candidate for the Public Service Commission in a seat that stretches all the way from Central Montana now to Southwest Montana, all the way to you know the the Bitterroot, practically, right? Right. Yeah, I'm running for the PSC. You know, the main jobs there at the PSC are to to keep the lights on and keep the trains on the tracks. Um, they also oversees uh, the pipelines and the fiber optic networks, and so all that fits pretty well with my uh, engineering background, and I uh, do hope to serve the people of Montana in that capacity. 
Well, Suzanne Norbert, great to see you. Thanks, uh, thanks again for joining us here this morning. We're live at the Hilton Garden Inn in Bozeman. If you want to step up to the microphone, Marty Malone, uh, in, in answer to prayers, uh, we were just talking about praying, and, uh, a, and then I'm like, wait a minute, we got a guy from Pray Montana who just showed up right now, uh, Representative uh, Marty Malone. Great to see you. Great to see you, Aaron. I appreciate you uh, doing this, letting me jump on and uh, listen to you on occasion. Uh, my son told me yesterday, so Aaron's going to be in Bozeman tomorrow, so. and he listens to you faithfully while he's feeding cows. Well, I'm glad he's got his act together, <laughs> you know, even if you don't all the time. Yeah, well, I don't all the time. No, I love it. We, we Some of our best listeners are people that they, they make sure that, that, you know, like in the 9 o'clock hour especially, you know, when we're on statewide, they, they make sure that they're in their pickup checking on cows right then and there so they can listen to the show while they, uh, while they cruise around and they can hear all the great callers and everything. Well, the beauty of uh, tractors nowadays, you can get on uh, ser serious radio or satellite or whatever you want to do, and it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, and uh, while you're feeding cows, listen to Aaron. AM, FM, and then, and then uh, you know, a lot of our stations have their own smartphone apps, so you can be gardening out in the front, or you can be... Uh, or you can be, you know, sitting in a pickup check and listen where, wherever from anywhere and uh, not have to listen to just what these national mainstream media outlets are trying to pump out for the narrative. Uh, tell us, uh, what are the biggest issues you see? If, if you could have an answer to prayers and uh, pray Montana, you guys are kind of in the crosshairs right now. I mean, yeah, but anyway, yeah, yeah tell us what, what you think are the biggest issues facing your constituents. Well, obviously, property tax is a big, big thing with yep. uh, all the... Uh, yeah, inflation on the in the homes and stuff like that, and I keep telling people that you uh, open the southern border for ten million people and don't expect an impact on housing prices. And these people move it in; they got to live someplace. And some people want to move to Montana to get out of there. And one of the things I interesting uh, some of these people that come in here always want to bring some of their here. That's right. And then pretty soon more we we see this uh, there becomes here. So uh, we need to be uh, the people that uh, in Montana that kept Montana beautiful. The Ringling Five had that uh, great saying about don't screw with Montana. We kept it beautiful for you. <laughs> Apologize for the inappropriate comment. Hey, no, that's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, the ring! They're a great band too. I remember when they did. Uh, we're at a count count on coal rally, supporting our uh, coal miners and our coal industry folks as well. You know, it, Paradise Valley, and then on down into the Yankee Jim Canyon, down into Gardner, Montana. Yeah, it's funny that, uh, that in the TV show Yellowstone, that the Paradise Valley, the f the fictional one in the TV show, actually has some real world analogies right there in the Paradise Valley of Montana, showing these conflicts of you know, uh, but. This these this pack of wolves that that devoured the elk on the high school football field in Gardner. I, I don't think people. I don't think a lot of people realize how significant that story really is. What do you you're, think? You're right, and uh, you know Gardner is uh, obviously right next to the park, and they, uh, you know, it's 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 right on the foot, right on the football field, right there, and uh, we got bison growing on there. I always thought. The, Gardner would be a good bison football team. Uh, <laughs> that's a bad word. That's a, that's but, a bad uh, word most of Montana. Yeah, right. Gardner's a great town, and, uh, you know, it's uh, really dependent on the Park Service. And, uh, you know, Park Service does uh, the economy of Park County and Gardner especially. Huge impact, all the salaries and stuff and all the people moving in. Well, one of the things I'm hearing from businesses that's there, and uh, we've advertised Montana enough we need to keep some of that bed tax money locally and help with our infrastructure. Uh, yeah, do we do we really need to advertise in Chicago and Seattle and I, anymore uh, right now? Especially, I mean, do we? I, uh, I think uh, the the, store, uh, the film Yellowstone has done a great job advertising, and people want to come here. Uh, but it's huge impact on uh, on Park County, and uh, you know that's why I kind of kind of uh, supported the Senator Lang's uh, marijuana bill to uh, put some of that money locally and for counties to improve their roads. They're getting hammered by out-of-state. Uh, the sheriff tells me 75% uh, of their calls are from out-of-state people. Uh, that's huge. And, uh, yeah. yeah, and then now we got illegal aliens. I mean, I, I just ran into a law enforcement officer here in uh, Gallatin County last night. We did an event out at 
Black Pot Distillery, Owen and his, his crew, great event out there last night seeing folks and just uh, chatting with folks who were randomly coming in, coming and going. And, and you know, and he's like, oh, yeah, we're seeing the drug cartels heavily here. And, and just like the flathead, like we don't have training dollars to train everybody up in how to speak Russian, how to speak Spanish, how to speak Portuguese and whatever other language the illegals or, or other so-called asylees they're dumping all over the state of Montana right now. Well, as the governor said, uh, every state is a border state right now. And with the, they're flying them in, and, and they're coming up here with fentanyl. You know, how many how many people are dying from fentanyl poisoning? I don't know the numbers, but uh, it's huge. It's huge. And uh, Not to mention people that aren't dying from it, but it's still killing families and tearing families apart. Uh, you know, you mentioned, uh, uh, you know, you mentioned, I like what you, what you said about tourism dollars. I think it's Great Falls. I feel like the tourism folks in Great Falls do a good job. I think they realize that, like, some of our best tourism uh, uh, support for tourism in Montana comes from our fellow Montanans. So if I want to promote tourism to Great Falls, well, I'm going to advertise on the radio in Billings or I'm going to advertise on the radio in Glendive. You know what I'm saying? And they do that. And I think it's, it's working really well for them and, and likewise other communities. And so, uh, yeah, do we really need to spend our money in Chicago or Seattle uh, anymore? Uh, property tax system, um, a lot of us just want to see the whole – we need to get away from this – Taxing people based off of the value of their home. I really, I, I know the legislature delivered property tax rebates, which was huge, uh, you know, for you know everyday folks. But you know, do you think we can finally just reform the whole system? Hopefully. Well, the Constitution says uh, the state is required to assess property at market value, so it's a constitutional amendment needs to be done. That, yeah. Uh, to me, it's uh, now can this legislature should the legislature amend that so you don't get hit with double property taxes in one year can you walk it in uh it's 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 hurt a lot of people especially seniors and i hear it a lot uh but they keep, keep voting for mill levies too so yeah although the a lot of these school ones went down in flames earlier ones. this week i think because of that concern over property taxes yeah well representative marty malone great to see you uh and uh thanks for making the drive in this morning and uh yeah hopefully you're sticking around for the luncheon as well all right perfect sure. yeah thank you it's it's great to see you here uh, we got a couple other gentlemen hopefully no no microphone for you just coming in to say hi that's cool too all right richard yeah if you want to hop on the microphone good to see you again um Earlier this morning, I got a chance to catch up with Carrie White. Carrie White's a former legislator out of the Gallatin Valley and uh, helps out with it. He's helped out for years with an incredible organization called Citizens for Balanced Use. And actually, Charles and I had got to have a conversation with Carrie earlier this morning. And I, so, but Carrie had to bring his granddaughter to school and then had other stuff going on. So I want to just share a couple of minutes of what Carrie White had to say and then get Charles uh, Garner's reaction here as well. Plus, Richard in Bozeman stepping up to the microphone. We're live from the Hilton Garden Inn in Bozeman with microphones open for you. This is where Montana talks at with Lane Nordland. A recent Rabobank report says the global pork industry is starting to shift as sow herd numbers begin to plateau after declining for some time. The stabilization is a result of better-than-expected consumption trends coupled with reduced production costs across the region. These factors are contributing to more optimistic outlooks for hog prices and are encouraging producers to consider rebuilding their herds. Are you concerned about the impact government policies could have on your cattle business? One way to make your voice heard in Washington is by joining NCBA. When you join, you'll be part of the nation's oldest and largest national cattle industry organization that has a professional team working in Washington, D.C. on issues that matter to cattle producing families nationwide. Don't stay on the sidelines. Make your voice heard by joining NCBA today at the website ncba.org. Look into some livestock market news at Western Livestock Auction, Great Falls, Montana. This week, the cow trend was a dollar to five dollars stronger, with slaughter cows priced at one hundred and fifteen to one hundred and forty-nine dollars a hundred weight. Heiferets one seventy to two hundred and seventeen dollars a hundred weight, and finally, slaughter bulls on prices six to eight dollars higher, coming in at one hundred and forty to one hundred and sixty-one dollars a hundred weight. Again, those are the prices from Western Livestock Auction in Great Falls. This is where Montana talks. Montana talks with Aaron Flint. 
Oh, man, I had to go snag a little more breakfast here. The nice thing about taking the show on the road is uh, they got a nice little breakfast buffet here at the Hilton Garden Inn in Bozeman. So I was like, oh, it's all you can eat. I'm going to go uh, throw a little more bacon on there. It's all protein, though. Uh, it's all Richard will be happy. It's it's nothing but protein on the plate for right now. Uh, I want to play. Um, this is just, you know, one of the clips. We I got a chance earlier to catch up with uh, former uh, legislator Kerry White great guy uh, here in the Gallatin Valley and, you know, big part of Citizens for Balanced Use, which fights for your access, outdoor recreation, especially motorized, motorized outdoor recreation, which they're always trying to shut down. And uh, anyway, let, let me just play the clip and then we'll get Charles Gardner's reaction and more. Carrie, what, what else do you want to talk about? What else do you think people across Montana need to hear about? Well, I came in this morning and I didn't expect to see Charles here. And then we were talking and he's a fascinating gentleman and he's an historian. But we made a connection right off because we both come from dairy farms. Oh, okay. Now, go figure. <laughs> you know, we were talking about how you work on a dairy farm. You got to milk cows twice a day and you don't ever get a vacation. And, but you do get a dip fresh milk out of the tank and drink it. <laughs> so that is a good thing. Do you like fresh milk out oh, of the tank? Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, that's we had the more... cream separator, you know, crank the handle. My dad used to love the cream on his cereal in the morning. I really didn't care for it. But, you know, you buy this in the in the store nowadays. Even the whole milk is not whole milk like it was like out, it of, used to be. out of the cow. The real you know, thick stuff. Yeah. The, yeah. Well, did you grow up in the Dutch areas here in the Gallatin no, Valley then? Okay. That was my great-grandfather's brother who settled out by the Manhattan area out there, and they raised potatoes. Yeah. But uh, my great-grandfather settled uh, originally in the Madison. We've had this place since 1868, the cow-calf operation. Uh, got, my sister-in-law has sheep and horses, my brother. But, uh, yeah, we've been on this place for 150, 160 years and, you know, trying to hang on. But the cattle prices are up this year, so I think uh, my brother's going to do pretty good on the cows and stuff. Well, they, they'll take it from him somewhere else, though, so he still won't be yeah. happy. It's a yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, I feel for the folks that are out there, and, I, you know, I talk about public land access and stuff, and a lot of it is, you know, these grazing leases that farmers and ranchers have and they're dealing with it with the american prairie reserve where they're switching those leases over to year-round bison uh for the american prairie reserve out there and removing i think dan bartell told me they've lost over sixty thousand head of beef in lewistown area by losing those leases but if you don't have that lease to move your cows onto in the summertime then you don't you're not able to raise hay to put the hay up to feed your cows through the winter so you're really collapsing that agricultural operation by losing those grazing leases and it's intentional i carry i think i think everything you not only are talking about this morning you know threats of monument designations and and you know between west yellowstone and bozeman but but all these other you know deliberate you know Charles, I'm sure you're familiar with this, living in, in the Flathead Valley. You've probably heard about the American Prairie Reserve. Basically, Hans Wies, who is this George Soros-type figure that funds all these radical environmental groups, he's one of the contributors. And they're they're going in and deliberately trying to get these cattle ranchers off the land and turn it into their own little playground for these left-wing elites. But the thing is, is they are working in collusion with our federal government. Biden administration, the BLM director, they are giving special perks to the APR that they would have never given to these ranchers here in Montana. And I think it ties in with your your discussion about, you know, the fall of empires, that this is deliberate. These are yes. deliberate attacks uh, on America. They are de these are self-inflicted wounds. Yeah, Charles that Garner are and Charles right Garner. Here. That was, uh, that was part of our conversation with Carrie White earlier this morning. Then we had some other uh, great ladies drop in that are running for office here uh, in, in the Bozeman area. But, yeah, it was fascinating how that tied in with what you were talking about. Because what set Carrie White off more recently was it was reported that that Interior – well, the Department of Interior, the Biden Interior Department, has been holding secret uh, meetings – with Hans Jörg Wies, who's an APR funder, and he funds all these radical environmental groups, but it just makes the point that, like, that the rise and fall of empires—they are deliberately trying to bring this empire down, and it's by backdoor deals with these radical environmental groups like the APR and more. 
Uh, it's an, uh, it does appear to be intentional, and, and it's an intentional descent into madness. Uh, we cannot continue this. The, uh, when you think about what uh, tears down um, an empire, the third century Roman Empire faced seven things. We face many of those same things. Uh, the things that are destroying us right now, national debt approaching $35 trillion, our interest rates up. I was just talking to you, and you said your children cannot afford housing right now uh, because of these kind of yeah, weights on us. Next to you, yes, yeah. yep. and th that kicks off inflation. And it's not tame. And once inflation gets out of the box, out of that cage, it, it, you can't get that cat back in. It, 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 is, it will stay with you. And the things that require us to do that are, are really stringent, and I'm not sure we have the political will to do those things right now. But justice and injustice, we see that right now. Uh, and then no standards or no absolutes, and then the woke agenda that's just splintering our culture. All of this appears to be a deliberate act to destroy America as we have known it. And our, father, our forefathers founders gave us a constitutional republic that demands that we participate. That's right. And if we do not participate, it's going to be on us. And you also list artificial intelligence there as, a, as another kind of threat. Uh, you know, That's looking the over, the horizon, over the horizon. And right. We're not sure what the upside of that is going to be. Uh, we're, we're not Luddites. We're not, we're not trying to say you can't go there. And, and it's the kind of thing you can't stop. But when you have people like uh, Elon Musk, uh, uh, other found Altman, uh, all saying, hey, look, we need to slow down. We, we're not sure where this is going to go. It can, it can ha have a negative effect. It can have some positive effects. But the negative effects, we're not sure what they're going to do. That's pay. right. Hey, he's got uh, the book is A Canary in a Coal Mine, Hope for a Culture in Free Fall. Uh, and he's going to be one of the speakers this afternoon right. at the uh, 11.45 this morning at the Gallatin County Republican Women Luncheon right here at the Hilton Garden Inn. Charles Garner, again, great meet, great seeing you. And hopefully we'll see you in the Flathead this summer. Cause yes, I, sir. I plan on uh, taking the show out on the road in the Flathead. Pick this conversation up. We'll do it. All right. Hey, Richard in Bozeman here in the house. I first got to meet Richard uh, actually in Helena. We were at Bob's Valley Market doing an event, and then you were at the Jimmy Fela comedy show. Richard, great to see you. What did you want to uh, share with our statewide audience this morning? Well, it, it all started uh, just last week, uh, basically, and I've been trying to connect. I was trying to get into come to the luncheon with my wife, but uh, we ended up um, having the tickets sold out too early, and I wasn't able to get a ticket. But I, might, I think they have some extra seats set up where people, can, even if you couldn't get the luncheon ticket, you can still hang out oh, okay. and listen well, in on everything. So yeah, it, it's yeah. all good and uh, really keying into your conversation with Charles in terms of Christianity and, you know, there was more going on behind the scenes for me to even get here, right? I could go into a whole large story about that this morning, but I'm here and we're together and and uh, the primary reason we had met originally was kind of what we keyed into in terms of our relationship was the commonality with the building's last diet and, yeah. and the, my success on that, right? But you've even now, back, you've not now lost nearly a hundred pounds. Yeah, so just Billings last diet, the same program that I did six years ago when right. I got back from my last deployment. Um, yeah, yeah, and so you've lost nearly a hundred pounds. Your knees don't hurt anymore. You're going on walks with your wife, and you get remote coaching. That your coach is in Billings, but mm -hmm. you do a remote coaching session from Bozeman. They ship you your products. Yeah, yeah, and and so yeah, that's such a great story. And of course, uh, they're a great uh, uh, you know supporter of our Billings uh, stations, our radio stations there. Um, yeah, and then what else is on your mind? What else well, do you want to tell folks about? I, I just coming coming here and being on the show with you, I'm I'm actually just a pound and a half under this week's weigh in, so um, I'm almost getting into the point to go into phase two. Hey, there and, you go. And that's all been weight loss since August of last year. So it's quite a bit for a short period of time. So the program obviously works well. That's uh, incredible. A great, yeah. uh, uh, I know you promoted a lot on here, but as I'm sitting here reflecting, I'm just making it here, and the battles we're in, we're fighting, really keys in at Charles and his book, you know, in terms of our relationship with God, et cetera, right? There's a lot more going on behind the scenes that we are invited to participate with the Lord in, uh, in active work within our communities, within our, our country, uh, et cetera. And so I guess that's probably the bottom line of, of why I'm even here. And that's, it is amazing. Like 
you know, we had um, former Democrat Congressman Tony Hall, who was appointed to a U.N. post under George W. Bush, very strong Christian man. He, talk, he talked about when he went on a 22-day fast in Congress mm, yeah, to highlight an important that. issue. And, and uh, you know, we so often forget to, to pray. And then we never want to think about fasting. Yeah. Uh, but, but when you go through a diet program, yeah. you realize, mm-hmm. like, actually how there are so many other beneficial side yes. effects from – from when you fast, mm-hmm. whether it's a diet program or whatever. Richard, great to see you. Another one of the uh, speakers today is our friend Mary Todd. She's a candidate for Congress in the Western District. She'll be speaking at the luncheon as well. Stand by and Mary Todd next up on the microphones right after this. I'm glad she was able to make it because, uh, yeah, she just drove in here just a few minutes ago. So stand by. Video. Broadcasting live across the great state of Montana, powered by the Montana Electric Cooperative Association. Your Montana Electric Cooperative, they do much more than keep the lights on for you. This is Montana Talks with Aaron Flint. Man, I better keep my remarks to a minimum when I speak at this luncheon today because there's three other speakers who are going to be far better than me. Uh, you just heard Charles Garner. My wife Jessica is going to be there today, too. And then our friend Mary Todd is going to be there uh, today speaking at the luncheon. Mary, so great to see you. Mary is running uh, in the uh, Western Congressional District for Congress. Um, I saw you when we were talking with Charles about these deliberate attacks against our country. Your head was nodding in agreement. Uh, Yeah, what do you want to share this morning? Well, and you know, Aaron, I think the Chinese Communist Party has a lot to do with these deliberate attacks. Our open border, the fentanyl is being produced in China, sold to the cartel, and then the cartel brings it through, and it's killing off our young people ages 18 to 45 and so, in fact, it's the number one killer right now. So I think a lot of what Charles talks about is by design. And it, is, it isn't just happenstance that all these things are happening. And I love his book, by the way. He and I have traveled together and we've spoken together and we've preached together. So I highly recommend for those who aren't familiar with your story, I mean, you, your family has suffered personal tragic loss or your own son uh, murdered by communist Chinese right. operatives, uh, and and your story's been told uh, nationally. I just saw Bill Malusian sent out a tweet yesterday. Uh, another 225 Chinese nationals apprehended by Border Patrol in the San Diego sector. That brings us to 25,000 plus Chinese since October 1st alone. That's just the ones they know about. They don't know about the gotaways. I mean, your son was tragically taken from you on foreign soil. Who are they allowing onto American soil right now? And how many more Americans are going to die because of what they're doing? This government is out of control and it's got to stop. And Aaron, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. I am not the same thing. I am a mama bear on a mission that wants to to change this nation and get it back, to close our borders, and not just say that we're going to close our borders, not just say we want to close our borders, but defund this government and use the power of the purse to actually make them close the borders. And that's what I'll do as your congresswoman. When when Charles talked about, you know, justice versus injustice, when we see, you know, this political persecution trial underway against Donald J. Trump, where they're <sighs> locking him away from the campaign trail, where he can't even campaign, they got an unconstitutional gag order in effect. And then on top of that, like we see what the Biden family has gotten away with, with millions and millions of dollars in huge business deals with the communist Chinese. And yet, and then uh, time and time again, you know, pro basically communist chinese deals that they i mean this whole green energy scam is basically us cutting a gigantic check to the communist chinese exactly and why isn't congress doing anything about it we have the majority in congress they should be subpoenaing all these people that are that are going against trump illegally and it's not right and no one's speaking up and i don't understand why we're not fighting for our president the best greatest president i mean next to Reagan that we've had in a, my lifetime. It is sick. What, what's your thoughts on uh, Monica Tranel, the Democrat candidate for Congress? They, uh, the Democrats ran her the last time. They're running her this time. 
she was bragging that she had this electric vehicle, but I, have you ever seen her drive the EV anywhere in western Montana? Uh, now the, the very rich uh, lady pretends to be driving around a minivan to virtue signal, but what happened to the EV? <laughs> what happens to all the EVs? <laughs> they, they show up and all of, all of a sudden the, the, the stations are broken and, and, and this administration is trying to get EV tanks for our military. So it's just, it's just a sham. The whole thing is a sham. I mean, when, when Monica Trinnell is rolling down I-90, it, it, you should be passing and go, beep, beep, it's my Bessie and a Tessie. But she's not driving an EV. But she wants to force us, to the rest of us, to pay for this green energy scam across the board. What the heck? Well, and you look at FISA, you look at all these things that, that the elected officials try to put on us so they can spy on us, but they don't want it for themselves. And that is wrong as well. So, you know, she's, she's talking a big game. And I don't care if she drives a fancy gas guzzling vehicle. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, this is America. Yeah. This is America. Yeah, that's right. Do you think? Do you think that China is actually that, that Xi Jinping is actually in a little bit of trouble right now because of their demographic situation? I had somebody heard an interesting speaker because of their one-child horrific abortion policy that the chickens are coming home to roost. Now they face a, demogra a demographic crisis. Uh, anyway, I, it's, Well, it it's, totally makes sense because when you have too many males and not enough females, nobody's producing. <laughs> I know we say in this country that men can have babies, but Aaron, have you seen it? Yeah. Well, did you see uh, Donald Trump? Um, I, I don't know if he was making fun of John Tester because of his weight. Uh, when I read the quote, it looked like he was mocking Democrats who believe that men can get pregnant. I thought that's what the joke was there, but... But, <laughs> well, Tester might be the first. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Well, uh, he's he's given birth to about thirty trillion dollars in additional debt uh, since two thousand and six, when it was only six trillion dollars. So, uh, well, so. and sadly, our Republicans haven't done much better, and that's what I want to stop with that one point two trillion dollar omnibus bill that had every woke agenda in it. I would not have voted for that. My opponent Ryan Zinke did vote for it. I would have said no. And so those are the things that I want to run for. And I, as you know me, I'm a mama bear and I'm strong and I will do the right thing and I won't be corrupted by the Chinese Communist Party for we, sure. Well, you know, if President Trump gets in the White House, but he doesn't have a House and a Senate to back him up, uh, I mean, they're going to try to... Uh, they're going to try to unleash chaos at every turn, just yes. like they did uh, uh, before. Mary Todd, great to see you. Excited seeing everybody at the uh, Gallatin County Republican Women Luncheon here today at the Hilton Garden Inn. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Aaron.